Lord be with you. Also with you. Please be seated. Welcome to worship on this Thanksgiving Sunday morning, and a special welcome not only to those who are worshiping with us in person, but to those who are joining us online this morning on our YouTube channel. Are there any announcements this morning? You've sold all your tickets? They're now a rare commodity, so get yours now. Okay, thank you. Are there any other announcements? I have to admit this morning to a twinge of jealousy. I drop uh, my wife, Reverend Kathy, off at Fairview uh, United before I drive here, and that means uh, driving past Evangel Temple twice. And this morning for Thanksgiving, they're having two services one at 9 and one at 11, and we drove past in the 9 o'clock service. The parking was spilled over onto the lawns around them. I remember when Thanksgiving used to be like that in all churches, and now it's uh, a weekend when people mostly go away. I can dream. Please uh, join me, if you would, and stand, if you are able, for our opening liturgy this morning which begins with the sung words of a familiar Thanksgiving hymn. God blesses us with gifts of love. God blesses us with talents and opportunities to serve. God protects us in times of danger. We gather to offer thanksgiving to the Lord our God, and we light this candle as a sign that God in Christ is always with us. Amen, and please be seated. And let us continue together with our prayers of adoration and confession. Let us pray. God of all creation, in this season of harvest thanksgiving, we are struck by the beauties of autumn, leaves in bright colors, birds flying south in formation, fields ripe with produce. Such beauty speaks of your goodness, 
that provides what each beloved creature needs. On this Thanksgiving weekend, renew our gratitude for what you give to us in the fruitfulness of creation and in Christ Jesus, who teaches us how to walk wisely on the earth you made. For all your good gifts, we honor you with thanks and praise, now and always. People of God, be at peace this day. We are a forgiven people. Jesus, our high priest, knows all the temptations of the human heart. From the throne of grace, he offers us mercy in our weakness to renew us in hope and faithfulness. Our hymn, All Things Bright and Beautiful.
Amen, and please be seated. If I tell you that that is an English hymn, did anyone spot the fake verse? Or the late edition? Yes, the Rocky Mountain Splendor, the, yes. That was added for the North American edition, uh, in part because that verse goes on at length about birds and creatures in the English countryside that you don't see in North America. So they didn't just drop it out, they put one in that talked about things you do see here. Sophie, do you want to be my willing victim this morning again? Thank you very much. We do have other kids. I just, you know, maybe they heard you were coming. I don't know. <laughs> Later on, you're going to be making one of these, which is celebrating the fall and celebrating, well, it says, fall for Jesus, he never leaves. Um, although Tiffany was telling me when she first did it, uh, in the design, Jesus and leaves were in large letters, so it, saw, it looked like it said, Jesus leaves, <laughs> which, so she changed it, so it doesn't show anymore. Do you know who Moana is? Who is she? Well, she's a character in, in a movie, and do you remember that she has a little bit of a problem at one point with the, I think of the great big guy is called, do you remember what his name is? I think you're right. And Moana has a problem about saying thank you. And so he sings a song. And he sings all the song about the great things he's done. And he looks at her and the chorus says, you're welcome, you're welcome. Until finally she says, thank you. Well, when our granddaughter was a little bit younger, she had a problem with please and thank you, the magic words. And so grandpa, or papa, that's me, being very annoying and teasing, I would stand over her while everybody else is going, what's the magic word? What's the magic word? I would go, you're welcome, you're welcome, you're welcome, you're welcome, you're welcome. Thank you, Papa, until she would say thank you. I sometimes think that Thanksgiving is a little bit like that, that once a year, a day comes when it's as if God stands over us and goes, you're welcome, you're welcome, you're welcome, you're welcome, and we finally say, thank you for all the things that we often don't think about because they're just there for the beauty of the world. But we think about it more at this time of the year because suddenly it changes color and it becomes glorious. And you're driving along and suddenly a road that was just all different shades of green before suddenly is all gold and red and spectacular. And you want to say, thank you. Or you see all of the... the the food that's now in boxes and cans, but if you're living out in the country, you see the farmers out in the fields uh, harvesting and gathering in the crops that are going to be the food that will keep us all fed all winter long, and you want to say thank you. So that's what this day is about. It's nothing difficult. It's as simple as it gets that sometimes you just need to say thank you. And sadly, sometimes you need to be reminded to say thank you for all the good things that come to us from God, but also thank you to the people around us who love us and share good things with us in return. So this is a good weekend for saying thank you. I know a lot of families at their Thanksgiving dinner will say grace Sometimes, even if they don't say grace any other time, we'll say it at Thanksgiving, but they'll go around the table and say, what are you thankful for? Maybe one good thing is to say, I'm thankful for all of you and for the way you love me all year round. Let's say a prayer before you go to, uh, over to prayer ground. Let's everyone pray together. Loving God, Loving God. we thank you, we thank you. for every good gift that comes to us from you. Amen. And here comes Tiffany.
And in case she's forgotten what you're doing, you can take the example over to her. Thanks, Sue. And you didn't hear, but I said thank you, and she said, you're welcome. <laughs> you didn't sing it, thankfully. Then it would have been too funny. We continue in our uh, worship service, turning to our scripture readings this morning. And our reader is uh, Mary, who will lead us, first of all, in our prayer for understanding. God of wisdom, send us your spirit to open our minds to your word. Move our hearts to deeper love and our wills to greater service. Through Jesus Christ, your word made flesh. Amen. Our first scripture, reader comes, sorry, first scripture reading comes from Joel 2, 21 to 24. Rejoice and be glad. Do not fear, O soil, be glad and rejoice, for the Lord has done great things. Do not fear, you animals of the field, for the pastures of the wilderness are green, the tree bears its fruit. The fig tree and vine give their full yield. O children of Zion, be glad and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he has given the early rain for your vindication. He has poured down for you abundant rain, the early and the latter rain, as before. The threshing floor shall be full of grain. The vats shall overflow with wine and oil. Our psalm is Psalm 67. The refrain is uh, found on Voices United 786. You'll hear it once by Mike. Second, it'll be with the choir. And then third time, please join in. Gracious unto us, O God, and bless us, and let the light of your face shine upon us. That the your ways may be known upon earth, your saving power among all nations. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy. For you judge people righteously, and guide the nations of the earth. The earth has yielded its harvest, and you, our God, has blessed us. Our second reading comes from Matthew 6, 25 to 38, sorry, 33. I'm like Tiffany today. I don't have my glasses on. Do not worry about your life. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your, earth, your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And can any of you by worrying add a single hour to your span of life? And why do you worry about clothing? Consider the, li consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not clothed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? Therefore, do not worry, saying, what will we eat, or what will we drink, or what will we wear? For it is the gen Gentiles who strive for all of these things, and indeed your heavenly Father knows that you need all of these things. But strive first for the kingdom of God 
and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Our hymn from More Voices, number 182, Grateful. Please be seated. Let us pray. Now may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. As I said at the uh, children's time, there's really no great deep mystery about this day. Its sole purpose is to remind us to be grateful, to remind us that we aren't in control of everything, to remind us that we need help from each other, from God, that none of us exists alone, independent unto ourselves. We're all dependent on others. And there is a need for us to show thanks for the gifts we receive of love, friendship, faithfulness, help, comfort in time of need. And this is the day that reminds us. But it's a bit of an awkward day because it doesn't really exist in the uh, calendar of the church's year. That's partly because, depending where you are in the world, harvest happens at different times. Um, if you were listening carefully, uh, you may have uh, heard, uh, I don't know if it was in Joel or in the psalm, uh, giving thanks that you give both the early rains 
and the late rains. We don't get rains that regular, but weather in uh, Israel is remarkably consistent, so much so that um, there is a date in the year when they turn on air conditioning in hotels. And there is a date when they turn it off because the seasons are that predictable. Second time we went to Israel uh, in that turn off the air conditioning season. For the first time in living memory, it was a week late. So the air conditioning was already off, but summer lingered on. But normally, their weather is that predictable. And they could count on the first rains, and then later, the second rains. When to take the first harvest, and then the second harvest. We don't have that predictability. And then there's the question of history. Our impression of Thanksgiving is essentially what we see transmitted in movies and TV from south of the border, which is a thanksgiving of an entirely different order based in a particular history, while thanksgiving up north actually draws its heritage from Europe and from the heritage of harvest thanksgiving, which happens earlier. In Scotland, tells you something of how far north they really are and what their weather's like. My home church celebrated harvest two weeks ago. Uh, it's getting on for rain and soon really cold weather. But whenever it turns around, wherever it comes around, it always has the same theme. It's time to be thankful. Unfortunately, because it's not actually in the church calendar, you're left a little bit at the mercy of the lectionary on this one, because more often than not, the readings that pop up on what is today, I think the 24th Sunday after Pentecost, have absolutely nothing at all to do with harvest. So I faked it. We read just a little bit of Joel, the bit that you could make sound like harvest, and I put in the psalm that does talk about harvest, uh, but I left in the gospel that's supposed to be there, which talks about not worrying, and does make a big reference to lilies in the field and birds in the air. I left them there because I thought that perhaps there was a message there for Thanksgiving, a little different than the message we're used to hearing this year, about, uh, this year that we're used to hearing year by year about harvests and counting your blessings. Although it does, in a way, have to do with counting your blessings. For years, um, I have suffered from serious depression um, since I was a teenager. And over the years, it became uh, chronic and led to two or three uh, sick leaves from, from ministry to get depression under control. And it has been under control for a good many years now and remains under control, and is fine. But I heard on the radio this week a comment that made me stop and think. It said, and the comment was, depression and regret largely arise out of thinking about the past about the things that we've done or have been done to us and the things we cannot change. And we end up dwelling on them. Anxiety, which is what Christ is talking about this morning, comes from dwelling 
on what is yet to be, what might come. Thinking about a time that hasn't yet happened and about events that may or may not ever come to pass. And that the only time that we can truly know real happiness is when we live in the present. Because this moment is the only moment in which we have agency, in which we have the ability to act and respond. And that has been swirling in my mind ever since. Those two ideas that we can only truly know happiness, know thankfulness in the moment. I can count up blessings from the past, but I can tell you on the long days when I sat in our front porch and stared into nothingness, I could have counted blessings till the cows came home, uh, and it would have made no difference at all. My mind was stuck on so many other things, including uh, taking my own life. There was a period of decades uh, when not a single day passed that I did not, at some point in that day, think about it would be so much easier. And that still occasionally happens, but it doesn't happen for long. Regret and depression come most often when we get stuck in our own past, which is something we cannot change. It's, as they say, water under the bridge. There's not a damn thing you can do about it. So let it go. Anxiety arises when we allow ourselves to be overwhelmed by the what ifs of a future that may never come to be. There's not a damn thing you can do about tomorrow either. So don't worry about it. Be in this present moment. The past will still be the past. The future will be what it will be. And to some extent, it will arise out of what you choose to do do with today. But if you're so filled with anxiety about tomorrow, you have no energy or time left to live and to be in this moment. Christ said, This is the moment you have. Live in it. Don't waste this moment trying to second guess the next moment. Be present now. I suspect that like those, like me, those moments when you are suddenly feel the need to thank God or thank something, come upon you by surprise. You turn a corner, and you suddenly see some spectacular view of forests in all their fall grandeur, and it takes your breath away. Or someone places a newborn baby in your arms, and your heart melts with the wonder of it and you are filled with gratitude and joy for reasons you bear not, bear, barely understand. And those moments don't come either because you were busy counting your blessings or because you were carefully thinking through what might happen next, but because you were, in C.S. Lewis's wonderful phrase, surprised by joy. God broke into your preoccupation, your distractions, your busyness. And for a moment, you live 
in the real moment. And in that moment, you find joy. You find gratitude. Our friends to the south are always misquoting their own constitution. They think they have a right to happiness. All the Constitution guarantees is a right to pursue it. I think the Founding Fathers understood better than many of those who read it in retrospect that, in fact, you might pursue happiness, but you can't catch it. Happiness comes upon you when you are surprised by joy and you live in the moment, letting go of what you cannot change and refusing to be overwhelmed and fretting your life away about what you cannot control, but living with God in the moment that God has given you in all of its fullness, in all of its possibilities, neither yesterday or tomorrow, but right now. And in the now, May God, who is always in the present tense, we live in the past, the present, and the future. God is always now. That's what it really means to be eternal, to live outside of the strictures and the limitations of time, but to be always and ever present, here and now. So the God who is present now, in this place, invites you to be surprised by joy and enter into this moment with thanksgiving and praise. Amen. And to God be all glory. The affirmation of faith this morning comes after the sermon. Sometimes it's before the sermon. There is a non-liturgical explanation for that that is given in seminaries. Uh, and, um, and it goes like this. The affirmation of the faith, whatever creed you're using, is either placed before the sermon as a vaccination against whatever heresy the minister might preach. Or placed after the sermon as an antidote to whatever heresy the minister has already preached. Our affirmation of faith, a new creed, would you please rise? We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating who has come in Jesus, the Word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect in creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus, crucified and risen, our judge and our hope. In life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Amen. While the choir makes their way back to the chancel, I will uh, make a, an announcement I did forget. Please be seated. I'll make a, an announcement I did forget to give earlier. Um, which is to give my regrets for our 190th anniversary service. Um, I will be in Iqaluit. Um, our daughter has uh, had surgery, when, which went well, uh, and she is in recuperation, um, but she's not allowed to lift and carry. Her partner, who is a Crown Prosecutor, the court in Nunavut, people don't come to the court, the court goes to the outports, it's flying off on Thursday for a week, and the Crown Prosecutor is going with it, which leaves our daughter alone with five kids in the house. I'm the only available grandparent, 
standing and able to fly. Uh, so on Wednesday, I'm leaving for Iqaluit, and it is a great joy that I'm going to spend a week with my grandkids that I see very little of, except by Facebook, uh, and a great disappointment uh, that I'm not going to be here. I've been looking forward to your 190th anniversary and being forcing you to look forward to it too for the last year. So I'm, I'm horribly disappointed that I'm not going to be here. But I hope that you will be here uh, to celebrate what is a remarkable uh, milestone on any congregation's journey. Let us continue in prayer and let us pray. Kind and generous God, as we give thanks for the harvest, we pause to praise you for all those things, both great and small, which fill our lives with meaning and offer us a sense of well-being. By your Spirit, O oh God, merciful and generous God, as we give thanks for the harvests of the earth, show us how to live respectfully in creation and protect all that is precious to you. In a year when harvests vary across our country, show us how to share what has been produced so that no one goes hungry. By your spirit, O oh God, just and generous God, we pray for the well-being of your world and our own community, where there is hostility between nations or neighbors, inspire leaders to show wisdom and courage in decision-making. We pray for areas hard hit by flood, by storm, by fire or earthquake, and for all those struggling in an uncertain economy. May neighbors with resources maintain generosity and compassion for the long work of reconstructing lives and livelihoods and neighborhoods. By your spirit, O oh God, healing and generous God, we pray for those facing health challenges or difficult times for any reason. And we pray for family and friends under stress or in sorrow, whom we name before you now in silence. Give us patience and understanding as we draw near to them and help us reach out to them with compassion. By your Spirit, O oh God. O oh God, in Jesus Christ, we have met your generous love and mercy. Through our lives and by our prayers, reveal his love and mercy in this generation. For it is in his name we offer the prayer he taught us, saying, Before the invitation to the offering, let me just note a, a, a typo. The doxology is not praise God from whom all blessings flow, uh, but it is um, a verse of we plow the fields and scatter. So you will recognize the, 
the tune. We thank you then, O maker, for all things bright and good. It's not, praise God, from whom all blessings flow. At Thanksgiving, we celebrate the gift of God's good earth, which sustain us. Yet this year, we know that in some places, harvests will not be plentiful, and that in every community, neighbors struggle to make ends meet. Today, we offer what we have in gratitude, praying that our gifts will make a difference in difficult times, trusting that God goes with us, whatever we face. The offering will now be received. I was uh, enjoying that lovely anthem and sort of gazing peacefully at the stained glass and noticed for the very first time there's a piece missing. At my uh, former church, Knox in Guelph, they too had a piece missing out of that window, only it was a bullet hole. It was the school kids' favorite part of the tour of the church, finding the bullet hole in the stained glass windows. It was from the Victory in Europe Day Parade 
that went up the street in front of the church and one of the uh, soldiers who didn't have to go then to Europe got overly excited, fired his rifle and the bullet went through the, the big stained glass window in the church. But as they became the favorite part for kids to go and look for, we continue to worship God as we sing not the doxology, but verse 3 of We Plow the Fields and Scatter. Let us pray. Generous God, we offer you our thanks for all the goodness we enjoy in Christ and in creation. Our hymn for the fruit of all creation. Cherish each day as God's gift so that you may gain a wise heart and live with gratitude for all God's goodness.